have any issues with connectivity. It always takes me a while to draw these, so I think we're good. All right, as we welcome new people here, I am Drew Badger, the founder of EnglishAnyone.com and the English Fluency Guide. Today I thought uh, I would make an interesting video for you about the word the and how to use it like a native speaker. Uh, I wanted to make this video because a while ago I got a video from uh, Viviana. This is a student in Fluent for Life. Uh, and she used a lot of great native uses of the, which really made her sound like a native speaker. I was impressed about that, and so I thought I would share a lot of those and many more in this video. So pardon me as I erase these over here. Uh, let me know if chat is working, so you can just comment, tell me where you're from, or if you have any questions, uh, that kind of thing. I'll try to be quick as usual, and then I'll stay around. I don't have that much time. Uh, for this video today, but I will do my best to answer any questions people have. But let's get into it. What? Well, let's see. Uh, Ukasa from Indonesia. Nice to see you there. All right. Well, let's get rolling. I will come back and check uh, questions later, and then we'll see how we do. So as I mentioned, this is about the word the. And the basic meaning, you've probably seen videos or you've learned about this in school and you've probably used it many times. Uh, the is about 7% of written text. So you might have like 5%, 7% around that. Uh, so it's the most commonly used word in English, but I'd really like to help you use it more like a native speaker because the definitions or the examples of it that you usually get in textbooks uh, are not they're kind of incomplete, really. Natives actually use the, the word in, in many ways, and we'll cover a lot of those in the video. Uh, we won't be able to cover all of them because there are really too many, but the point of this video really is to help you think and speak more like a native, especially using this very important word. Uh, so just to give a very quick lesson about the, the common uses of it, uh, so this is the definite article, and we have the indefinite articles as well. So we have A, and an, and the only time we're really talking about the difference between these is when something is specific or when something is not. Uh, so as an example, and, and I just want to cover this very quickly because you're probably familiar with these rules already, but just in case, so we have a and an, we're talking about something uh, kind of unspecific, like a marker. Could you give me a marker? Could you give me a marker? So in that case, you're being not specific, unspecific. You don't care about which marker. So this is a marker, this is a marker, this is a marker. This is one of the first lessons that you learn uh, when learning English. So this is a marker. Uh, we use a or a when we're talking about like a marker, a book, something like that, where it's easy to say the word. So a marker, a book. But if we have an eraser, so we have the word E over here, so the eraser, e -r eraser. The sound of it, an eraser, sounds much easier than if we just have a, a eraser, a eraser, okay? So we have an here just to make it easier to say. Everybody should be familiar with these rules of the uh, an versus the over here. Now basically these two are exactly the same, it's just for pronunciation purposes and which is easier to say. So if we have a word like umbrella, an umbrella is easier to say. But if we're talking about a specific one, like I want the black marker, we want this thing and not the other one. So we're not talking about a marker, we want the marker. All right, so these are the basic fundamental rules about a and. So these are the indefinite articles versus the definite article. Uh, these are all determiners as well, and I won't even go into uh, like all of the different determiners you could use. This video really is just about the, but I want to make sure everybody has a basic understanding uh, just for these things that you might find in like other videos or textbooks. This is a regular textbook definition. And of course, there are more meanings uh, or more uses of it where we talk about specific types of water like the Mississippi River or the something like that. Uh, you can find those rules very clearly, but let's get into the native uses of the. All right. So, oh no, look at that. The bottom of that fell out, but I've got my spare over here. Look at that. I came prepared. I came prepared. All right. So, uh, 
and Anne. We're going to forget about those right now. And I'm actually, well, I'm going to put them, let's see. I'll put uh and Anne over here, just as a contrast. So, uh, and then we've got the, like the regular uses of the over here. So something non-specific versus something specific. But natives are actually using the language or this specific word, the, in a more kind of specific and non-specific way at the same time, all right? So it's almost like a middle between a, an, and the, uh, between, so between a or an and the, this is the way natives are using the language and so that's what we're gonna talk about right now. Uh, so as I, as I give you a bunch of examples of these, you have probably heard some of these before, maybe some of these will be new, but the goal really is to help you sound much more conversational in your conversations. All right, so let's go, we're gonna start with places for these. I've got a whole list of them already because I'm not going to remember all of these. I try to be you know, a good teacher and remember as many of these as I can, but uh, hopefully this should be more entertaining for you. So we're going to talk about places first and how natives use this word. So we'll talk about places, P-L-A-C-E-S, places. All right, so on the most, the basic level, we might talk about places people are very frequently, like uh, the office or the store. All right, so when we're talking about places, uh, natives will say if you're talking about where you work. So if I'm on the phone with a friend of mine and he says, oh, where are you right now? I could say, I'm at the office. I'm at the office. Now we're being specific using the word the, and he probably knows I mean my own office. Like I'm not saying I'm in just like some random office, but it's the kind of thing where we're being non-specific and specific at the same time. Isn't that weird? But this is a conversational way of saying this. Like you could say I'm at my office. I'm at my office right now. But conversationally, the office will just sound uh, much more natural. Yeah, I'm at the office right now. Oh, where are you calling me from? Yeah, I'm calling you from the office. Calling you from the office. So there's even a TV show about that, like The Office. And this is the native understanding of it's a specific office we're talking about, but it's kind of like a general thing as well. Like that could be any office anywhere, all right? But in this sense, we're talking about the office like my office my office, all right? So hopefully this makes sense. It should be pretty easy. We're gonna cover a bunch of examples and that will be a little bit easier than just trying to remember some rules about it. Uh, but let's think of some more. And if you think of anything in the comments, so specific places we might use like this. So we've got the office, just think about the at the beginning of all these. So the office, uh, the store, uh, we might have the gas station. Whoops. So the gas station or the train station as well. So just we'll just put station here. So if I talk with a friend of mine, he says, where are you? Oh, I'm at the station right now. I'm at the station, the station. Now it might not matter what station I'm at. So maybe I'm talking with him. If I'm trying to meet him or her for some purpose, oh yes, I'm at the train station right now, or I'm at the airport, I'm at the airport. All right, we would never say I'm at an airport right now. It's logically or grammatically possible to use this, but it would be very, it would just sound kind of unnative or non-native, I guess. So if, if I'm talking with a friend of mine and, and I have no like connection or anything about what we're doing today, we're not meeting for any reason, I just say, oh, I'm at the airport or I'm at the station. Like, where are you right now? This is where I am. But we use the because we're talking about a specific thing and it's specific to me, even if it's not specific to the other person. Now, from there, we might go into more like, oh, what station are you at? Or where specifically? What station specifically? Okay? But in general, this is how we're describing these things in a regular conversation. Conversationally, uh, I'm at the store, the gas station. Okay? We might have the, the park. So yesterday, I was at the park with my children. My children, my kids. I was at the park. I was at the park. Were you at the park? Did you go to the park? Now, I might be obviously at a specific park, but nobody really cares what park I'm talking about, unless maybe they have a question about that and they ask me which park or what park did you go to, all right? But in general, if I'm just at a park, 
Uh, it would be, it would sound a little bit odd if a friend of mine asks me, oh, where are you right now? And I say, oh, I'm, I am at, I'm at a park right now. That would sound almost like too formal for the conversation. It would be correct English. I am at a park right now. Like I am in a building right now. But the park sounds a lot more conversational. I'm at the park. All right. Now, an interesting thing, I think somebody just mentioned, uh, I'm at home. Yeah. So if you can be at home, now this is an interesting one. You could be at the house. I'm at the house right now. I'm at the house. So I'm not at the office, I'm at the house. It's again correct and perfectly fine to say my house. So I can say I'm at my house right now, but I can also say I'm at the house. I'm at the house. I'm at the house. All right, now here's a quick question for you just to test this. Uh, we'll see if you can give me some native answers. This should be pretty easy, but if you were very hot and you would like to go for a swim, where might you go and how would you say that like a native? Should be very easy. Just comment right in the chat right now. If you are very hot, so it's a hot summer day, maybe it's getting, it's getting pretty warm over here as well. Uh, it's very hot today and I want to go swimming. Where might I go? Where might I go? All right, I'll give you a second. I'll give a few more examples up here, uh, but just post that in the comments. Let me know where you would go if it's hot and you want to go swimming. Should be very easy. All right, so other places we might go, I am at the bank, or I'm at the post office. So notice these are all, well, I'm going to the pool, bam. I'm going to the beach, excellent. All right, so the pool or the beach. I'm at the beach, all right? So right now, oh, I'm enjoying the weather. I'm enjoying the beautiful weather. We'll talk about some of those words in a minute, but I'm enjoying the beautiful weather at the beach. The beach, okay? Now, a friend of mine might ask me, what beach? Okay, again, yes, you might go, very good, Subasa, going to the pool, the pool. All right, <laughs> Artero is back. So the pool, the beach, the post office, the store, the gas station, so any place around town you could go to, you would really be talking about, it doesn't matter if, if it's, a, like, a, if it's a, if a, like a specific store, like I am at the Whole Foods or the specific grocery store name on this street. Most people don't care in conversations unless it's important to share more information uh, about that particular thing, okay? So you can say, hey, let's go to the pool. Let's go to the pool. Let's go to the beach. Let's go to the park. Now, we might not know what park we want to go to, but we begin with just the idea of the park anyway, all right? All right. Any questions about that? All right. So hopefully these are just basic things, any place around town. Now, where might you go? Another quick question for you, where might you go? Where would you go? Where might you go if you want to get your hair done? So there's a typical place, maybe men use this vocabulary more and women use this other vocabulary. So there are two things, if you're a man or a woman, where might you go to get your hair done? To get your hair, maybe get a haircut, get your hair shampooed or whatever, where would you go? Where would you go? Someone asked me if I've been doing more exercise. I do the same amount of exercise usually. Oh, boom, Andres says, going to the barber shop. Very good, going to the barber shop. Now, where might I go if I'm a, if I'm a woman? Usually like the ladies place, what's the name of that? I might go to the, so we have the, so barber shop. So you could just say the barber also. Yep, you could say the barber. Uh, so you could, again, like it's correct to say I go to a barber go to a barber, but conversationally we just say, yeah, I'm at the barber. I'll go to the barber, okay? So we've got hairdresser, very good. Now hairdresser is a slightly older uh, expression. People do still use this. You can also call this the hair salon. The hair salon, yeah, I'm going to the hair salon. Look at that, ooh, that's nice and fancy and modern. The hair salon, the hair salon. 
So if again, a friend, you're talking with them and it's not important what specific hair salon or barber or whatever, whatever the particular location is, you're just being conversational, okay? So again, to the station, go to Supercuts, okay? <laughs> yes, so if you go to a specific place, then we would say, oh, I go to the Supercuts on this street. Or if you just want to talk about the name of that company and it doesn't matter which, uh, which location, I go to Supercuts, all right? So barber, yeah, you can say it doesn't matter, barber or barber shop, both of those are fine. I need to go to the barber. So I'm thinking, oh no, my hair's getting a little bit long. I'm talking with my friends. I, I think I need to go to the barber. I haven't been to the barber in a while. Of course, I mean any barber. I, I could say I haven't been to any or I haven't been to a barber in a while. But most people would just say the barber, okay? So it's, it's again, it's like the idea of that thing, even though we're being, again, specific but general at the same time. But this is the conversational way we talk about that. It's almost like an idea of what a barber shop is, okay? Even if we're not talking about a specific place. So I might move to a new city, all right? I might move to a new city and I don't know a good barber shop. I don't know about uh, like a good record store. So I don't know maybe where I should go. So I'm looking for a good place. Do you know of like a good record store? So I can ask people logically, grammatically, I can use a like that, like a record store, a record shop, or a barber shop, or a park, a station, a gas station, a store. So do you know of a good store around here? But if I'm saying like, you know, I need to go to the grocery store right now. I need to get some eggs. I need to go to the grocery store. So maybe I'm thinking of a specific store, but it doesn't really matter. Most people don't care. So that's why we can use the without going into more details about it. Okay. Any questions about that? So these are all basic places and we can talk about a general place or even a specific place, but it just sounds more casual and conversational with the, with the, all right. Nice to see more comments here, people. Uh, I'm not trying to ignore people. I want to get through these uh, because we have a lot of examples and it's really through the examples that you will understand this more like a native. So native kids are listening to these examples all the time. So mom says, oh, I need to go to the store. I need to go to the hardware store. I need to go to the park. I need to go to this place, to that place. All right, so as they hear those examples, uh, they feel more kind of used to that or they understand that people are using that in a conversational way, all right? So if you can think of any more, you can put them down in, uh, just down in the chat. And then again, we can cover those if you like, but these are general just places. Again, we've got, uh, you might even have a specific place like the corner. So I meet my friends or I met my friends at the corner yesterday. So just like the corner of some street. And maybe I don't even care uh, what specific corner you're talking about. Obviously there are many corners in a street. So a street corner, but I'm talking, I'm thinking of a specific one. So I met them on the corner yesterday. And then we went to the airport. Then we went to the concert. Okay, so now we'll talk a little bit more about uh, other specific, not necessarily places, but things. And so we can connect these as well. We've already had a few examples of them, but I'm going to erase places and we'll talk about some things, the things, if you can think of any. I don't really like this eraser. i use my one that fell on the ground over here. Try this one again. What's nice is you can kind of flip this one over, see if that erases better. That's pretty good. All right, so we're gonna coin, uh, continue over here. Let's say I like to, uh, on a Sunday morning, I like to read the paper. I like to read the paper. What am I talking about if I like to read the paper? Now it's obviously, uh, it's specific for me, but it's non-specific for other people. But people generally have the idea of reading the paper as what? I'm sure some of you know what this is, even if you're using uh, the internet now. But everybody should know the paper means the newspaper. Okay, very good. Jay comes in there, yes. And the psychotic American teacher as well. Oh my goodness, you're psychotic, you should seek help. 
Hopefully you are doing all right. The paper as in newspaper. Yes, that's correct. So I'm reading the paper. I like to read the paper. I like to read the, and this is a, uh, if you guys know, you look stronger. Okay. <laughs> all right, people, yeah, focus, focus on the board, focus on the board. All right, so read the paper. Now, there's a word for the comics. So the comics. So the comics inside that, we can also refer to at, that as the, F-U-N-N-I-E-S, the funnies. Yeah, I was reading the funnies. Isn't that weird? This is kind of an older expression. You can talk about the comics section of a newspaper. This is where the cartoons are. Uh, but this section is also called the funnies. The funnies. I know teaching made you psychotic. <laughs> I know the feeling. I know the feeling. It can get crazy sometimes. It can. All right. You need to read the funnies. Hopefully that will calm you down. All right. So when I'm reading the paper, I like to read the comics. I like to read the funnies. I might read the sports section. I might read the editorials or the editorials. Okay. And that's just for the newspaper. So I'm talking about a specific section, but I don't even know, or maybe you don't know, what specific paper I'm talking about. Maybe I read, I don't know, whatever uh, local paper for my local area or a national paper or something else, okay? But this is what I mean. I like to read the paper and then someone might ask me, oh, what paper do you like? What paper are you reading? Okay, what newspaper do you like? And then we can go into more detail about that. But generally, we can start with this. You will hear re me repeating this again and again because I want to make it very clear. We're just being conversational without trying to be too specific unless it matters. And in that case, we would get more information from someone else. All right, next, we've also got the, the energy. I don't really have the energy uh, to teach people today. I'm, very, I'm feeling, very, uh, feeling very tired. I don't have the energy to teach you. So we don't even know specifically how much, how much energy are we talking about? Okay. The energy. I don't have the energy. We might also not have the, the time. The time. Could you give us quickly explanation about the pronunciation of the? Yes, so you will hear me. It's much better rather than getting a, like a pronunciation rule about this, just to hear my examples. So sometimes if we hear a word like, so there is a movie like The Planet of the Apes. Now you might hear like, just because the is connected with P over here, like the planet, the planet, the planet. So this sounds easily, uh, kind of flows easily together, the planet, the planet. If I say the planet, it sounds a little bit, it's, it's a little bit extra effort to say that, the planet. But the planet of the apes, so the apes, it's almost like it, it's, it's too connected, the apes. So we might say the planet of the apes, the planet of the apes, the planet of the apes. So really the pronunciation of the is connected to the next word following it, all right? And rather than uh, try, to, try to think of a rule for this, it's better just to listen to lots of examples, which you will hear in this video. So I'm going to the store, the store, the beach, the playground, the park, uh, the bank. I've got the energy, it's all right? So again, we've got the, if I say the, I don't have the energy, the energy. It's a, little, it's a little harder to say that because the sound is basically the same. The energy, it sounds like one thing, the energy. So we would say the, the energy. I don't have the energy to say this, okay? So again, rather than trying to go through a list of rules, what we really want to do is give you lots of examples. And that's how you hear it, all right? All right, let's see. So the energy, the apes. Listen for the sound of the word. Listen carefully to native speakers. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. All right, so we've got the paper, the time, the energy. I might be talking about people as well. Uh, tomorrow I've got the family coming over. Tomorrow I've got the family. I've got the family coming over. Now, what might this mean? It usually means like my extended family. So if I have my sister and her family or my brother and his family, other people coming to my house for the holidays. 
the holidays. The holidays, okay? Now, the holidays typically refers to a specific time at the end of the year, but it's usually for a group of people. So I have like the Christmas or New Year's or whatever the particular holiday is uh, near the end of the year. This is typically what we talk about as the holidays. We're not talking about Valentine's Day or President's Day or something in the United States. It's usually where we have a lot of holidays at the same time. Yeah, so the family is coming over for a family gathering. I might have the parents. I could, again, even be talking about my own parents. I could say my parents are coming to my house uh, for dinner tomorrow. Or I could sound, again, just being a bit more casual, conversational, the parents are coming over for dinner. So people understand I'm talking about my parents. It's okay to say my. It's not a bad thing. Again, it's just this is another example. And I want you to be prepared for when you hear other natives say that, like, what do you mean the parents? Or, what parents are you talking about? Ah, you mean your own parents. So I might also have the in-laws. The in-laws. The in-laws. So notice the pronunciation again here. So we've got it, it. If I have the in-law, the in-laws, it's a little bit more difficult to say. The in-laws. That's why we say the in-laws. The in-laws. The in-laws. So it's the same word, pronunciation just changes a little bit to make it easier to say. If there's a rule you need to think of, I call this really the one rule for pronunciation that I teach more uh, in Speak Like Me, but this is the basic idea where it's just meant to be uh, easier to say. The in-laws, the in-laws. So the parents, the parents, the in-laws. The parents, the in-laws. All right. Uh, of course, we mentioned this earlier, we've got the weather. Another common usage, oh, how's the weather today? So if we're asking questions about these things as well, how's the weather? How's the weather? Of course, I'm talking about the weather where you are or the weather where I will be tomorrow. So if I'm traveling, oh, how is the weather in Tokyo? How is the weather in uh, Sao Paulo? How is the weather in Texas? How is the weather in whatever? All right, so we're talking about that specific thing, uh, but in general, like, we can also, as I'll mention in a little bit, we can talk about the weather generally in a place like uh, the weather in uh, Alaska is nice in the summertime and very cold in winter. So the weather in that particular place, the weather. Okay, pretty simple examples, but again, I want you to just, I really, really want you to get you thinking more like a native by using these examples of the rather than a uh, or an or something, even if that's grammatically correct. So the, these are not grammatically incorrect examples. These are correct as well. They just sound more conversational. All right, next, let me clear some space. We might also have the problem. What's the problem? What's the problem? What's the problem? Uh, what's my, I think someone just adds here, let's see. How are sister's husbands called in English? Oh, that would be my brother-in-law. My brother-in-law, my brother-in-law. So what's the problem? What's the issue? What's the reason? If we're again talking about something specific, and we want to know, or at least, uh, like I might have like, you know, I'm, I'm worried about something and someone just asked me, hey, what's the problem? Yep, what's the matter? So let me a good example. What's the matter? What's the matter? What's the matter? Or the situation. So if I come into a room and it looks like people are arguing with each other or there's a problem or something, I always say, what's, what's the situation? What's the situation? So it's another way of asking what's happening, what's going on in this situation, in this room, what's happening. What's the situation? All right, and now we'll have a, uh, a few quick examples about time that native speakers use. These are uh, longer phrases, but these are very useful and you will hear them a lot. The good old days. The good old days. So we're talking about 
So we have the good old days. So if I'm thinking, remembering, uh, remembering years ago when I used to be a kid and uh, play with my friends and go to the park or go to the local uh, restaurant or whatever, uh, those are or those were the good old days. The good old days. The good old days. So I'm talking about a specific time, but yet it's still general. The glory days. Yep. The glory days. Yep. So again, we're talking about sometime probably when I was a kid or maybe when I was in college or something like that. Yep, the bad weekend. You can talk about specific time periods like that as well. We can also talk about the other day. Now, this is a native, casual conversation. Yes, back in the day is another one as well. Back in the day. Now, back in the day is a more modern expression. So you will hear people using this, uh, like younger generations. Uh, you typically wouldn't hear. It's like the good old days is like an older expression, and back in the day is a younger expression. But you notice they're still talking about the... So back in the day, back in the day, back in the day, back in the day. You know, things have changed a lot. Back in the day, I used to, uh, I had to type on a typewriter rather than uh, use a computer. So back in the day. Or in the good old days, in the good old days, the good old days. All right. I'm old, 38 years young. Yeah, that's young. That's young. All right. And we also have one last example here for the... Time being, B-E-I-N-G, time being. For the time being, it just means right now. But again, we're talking casually, conversationally, for the time being. We just mean right now, for the time being. So maybe I'm, uh, I'm working at a job I don't like very much, and someone says, oh, you should get a different job. And I say, well, uh, this is okay for the time being. It's okay for now, for the time being for the time being, all right? But again, all of these are using the in a very casual, conversational way, being specific but not specific at the same time. I know that sounds weird, but just imagine it like, it's like someone could be thinking about a specific time, but it doesn't really matter. In the meantime as well, yeah, you could use that as well. So in the meantime. All right, so some more examples. More examples, look at that. You guys get lots of examples today. Now let's say I am enjoying, I like watching baseball on Saturdays. So I might tell people what. I enjoy what. So I'm watching baseball or football or basketball or whatever, or soccer. Uh, I have a particular sport I enjoy. So I like watching the game. So again, this is another thing. This is a, a really a conversational, very common expression for just watching some kind of sporting event. So I like, in general, to watch the game on Saturday. Or I like meeting my friends to go to the game. Okay? The game. So it could be watching a game, and we're not even talking specifically about a particular game or a particular sport but usually people have an idea of what that is. And if the listener cares, they can ask, oh, what do you mean? <laughs> what game are you talking about? Uh, but usually people, people like they, they have a connection already where they understand these things without needing to explain that. So my friend already knows I like baseball or basketball or something, and I say, yeah, I really, I can't go. I'm, I'm watching the game on Sunday night. So he probably means all like probably some basketball game or my home team's game or whatever. So I'm thinking of a specific thing, even though I can generally use this. So some people like to watch the game on Sunday. We don't know what game it is, <laughs> but it's, it usually means some kind of sporting event. And if you care, if you like knowing, or if you want to ask someone, hey, would you like to come watch the game with me? And then they will say, oh, what do you mean, a game of chess or something? And native speakers would understand, ah, you're talking about a sporting event. Yes, pronunciation will also differ uh, depending on where you are in the United States. That's true. Oh, yeah. 
So we might have uh, the plan. So what's the plan for Saturday? What's the plan? So I might ask my wife, hey, what's the plan for today? What's the plan? What's the plan for today? What's the plan? Do we have a plan for today? I can ask that as well, but I can also say, what's the plan? What's the plan? What's the plan? So there are many ways to use this. The, again, it just lets us express it in a very casual and conversational way. What's the plan? All right, so I think we covered a few more of those. We've already gone half an hour into this video, my goodness. I'll give you a few chores. I'll give you another chance to answer some questions. Can you think of any chores? Let me erase this here. Kid are also using the. What are some chores that we might do? So I have to do some things. Maybe I don't want to do them. I don't like doing them. These things are called chores, a chore. Can you think of any? I'll start you off with one. We have take out the. Take out the trash. Can you think of any more? Wash the dishes, very good. Wash the dishes. Wash the dishes. Let's see, so you could say do the dishes, wash the dishes, wash the dishes, do the dishes as well. I have to do the dishes. So people aren't asking what specific dishes am I talking about? All right, so you might in this case, that's a good example, make the bed. I've got to make the bed. I make the bed after I wake up. I make the bed. Of course, I'm talking about my bed, and I can say that, but really it sounds just a little less conversational. Every morning I wake up and I make my bed. I have to make my bed. Make my bed. Yes, what the? Yes. <laughs> Another good example. So I'm talking about something specific, all right? So you can, so these things you will hear, as you hear different examples of them, you will think, okay, is it make something or do something? It's just, a, it's better not to remember a bunch of rules about that. Often the rules can be broken anyway. So just like young kids that are learning the language, you want to just get many examples, get many examples. So we got make the bed, or we could have, uh, again, do or wash the dishes, take out the trash. See if we had any more over here. What do you call your wife's, your wife's sister's husband? Yeah, he'd also be my, my brother-in-law. So if I'm, if, if I'm married and I have a, uh, my wife's sister and she's married, her husband would still be my brother-in-law. So my wife is, or my wife's sister is my sister-in-law and her husband is my brother-in-law. All right, so the mopping, that's right. So you could do, I think British English, uh, do the dishes, they call that the washing up, the washing up. But you'll notice they still use the, the washing up. To do the laundry, that's right, the laundry. To do the laundry, to do the laundry, to do the laundry. Of course, I'm talking about my laundry, all right? So every Saturday I do my laundry. You will very rarely hear that. Every Saturday I do the laundry. I do the laundry, much more casual and conversational. I dust every other day. So you could do the, the dusting. So any kind of cleaning, like I do the cleaning, the dusting, the vacuuming, or I walk, walk the dog. I walk the dog. So there's an L in here. I walk the dog. I walk the dog. I don't like to do the laundry. Very good. I don't like to do the laundry. Yeah, a lot of people don't like to do the laundry. They don't like to do the ironing, the cleaning. Okay, the ironing. You hear the difference in my pronunciation? The ironing or the dusting, the ironing, the dusting. All right, so you can hear why that is. So iron begins with that I sound. The ironing, the ironing sounds a little hard to say. So the ironing is easier to say. All right, so like running errands, do you like, let's see, uh, lessons about YouTube that talk about IELTS exam. Do you have any lessons on it? 
Uh, no, I do not cover the IELTS. Specifically, you should find other people who do. You can easily search YouTube for that. All right. Yes, some people do love to do the ironing or the washing or whatever, the laundry. Some people like to do that, all right? And that's okay. I like to fold the laundry. I don't like to do the laundry. I like to fold the laundry, the laundry, okay? Any questions about this? Some more chores, especially walking the dog. Of course, you can talk about my dog. I have to walk my dog today. But people will often just say, I have to walk the dog. And you'll notice part of it is being casual and conversational, but it's also faster and smoother to say this. So let's try walk, walk my dog. So walk my dog and walk the, walk the dog. So if I say walk my dog, this transition here from the K to the M, walk my dog, it takes a little bit more time to say that, walk my dog. But walk the dog, much faster, walk the dog. I don't like to do nothing. Well, you, you mean, William, I think you mean I don't like to do anything. I don't like to do anything, all right? Or you would say I like doing nothing. I like doing nothing. Yes, if you pay for other people to do these for you, that's fine as well. Can we, we, can we say the brooming? Uh, we wouldn't use broom as a verb like that, but we could use the sweeping. I like to do the sweeping or sweeping up. All right, V sounds like Shakespearean language. <laughs> it's just the pronunciation is a little bit easier that way, but that's why we have these different pronunciations. Yes, make the bed, so we've got that up here as well, make the bed. All right, two more examples, uh, depending on if you have these where you are. So we have cut the grass and mow the lawn. So there are others maybe for gardening or things like that. You might have like to weed the flower beds, to walk the children. I guess you could walk the children if you're exercising them or something. Like you walk the children to school walk the children to school. And again, that's another good example of you're talking about probably your children specifically. To mow the lawn, to mow the lawn. So I could mow the lawn with a lawn mower. Clean the house, okay? So again, I'm talking about my house. People will generally understand uh, I'm cleaning my house, not just houses in my area, all right? So broom is a, is a noun, like the physical thing. This is a broom and the action is the sweeping. So you don't, you don't broom something, you sweep. You sweep with a broom. All right. All right, I think we have a few more examples here. I don't want to make this too long, but I thought this last set uh, would be particularly valuable because it might not be known by many people. So we'll move on from chores over here. And this is something I don't hear from non-native speakers as often, which is why I want to cover it. Really strong markers. All right. Say thanks, I don't like to do anything. There you go. <laughs> but yes, if you've got a better time or you want to spend your time doing something else and you can hire people to do work for you, that's perfectly fine. You can do that as well. It's pretty smart, actually. Uh, all right, so let's talk about, like if you're doing something or talking about something in a particular place. So as an example, uh, the fishing, so if I, let me, I'm, I'm going to get people in the comments complaining about my bad handwriting. I know it. So let me be a bit more clear here. So the fishing in, uh, or let's just say the fishing here, make it easy. The fishing here is great. What do I mean by that? The fishing here is great. The fishing here is great. So this means usually I can catch a lot of fish or it's fun to fish or it's easy to fish in a particular place. So if I'm in a pond, you imagine a pond like this, this place right here, oh, the fishing over here is great. So the fishing here is great, but the fishing over here, oh, that's terrible. The fishing over here is terrible. So we can talk about something in a particular place. Very useful, uh, 
way of, uh, of creating some very simple phrases, but this is how natives usually speak about things like this. So we're talking about a location or something happening or some attribute of something like that. Okay, so typically a place. So the fishing here is great or the fishing here is terrible. All right, so we can use this same pattern when we talk about really any location and we can talk about anything related to that. So if I'm going skiing, I might say the snow, the snow here, and it could be like, it doesn't mean uh, only here. I could say the snow on that mountain is great. The snow on that mountain is great, or the snow on that mountain is uh, not so good. So I can talk about a particular thing at a place and describe how it is. All right. Maybe like the teaching in this video is not so good. Someone could say that. So the teaching here or the teaching in this video is not so good. Or they could say the teaching is excellent. All right. So you're talking about a particular thing like a, a verb. You're doing something. Or I could talk about a noun in this way and still describe it. All right. So this becomes a noun like the fishing. I'm talking about a specific thing. Okay. The fishing, the snow. All right, now let's say I go to a restaurant and I'm asking a chef here or I'm asking my waiter. I might say, oh, what do you recommend? So I'm asking a question, what do you recommend? And the person says, oh, like the, the lobster is excellent. The lobster is excellent. All right. So the teaching in this video is great. You're too kind. All right, so the lobster is excellent. I'm talking about a thing in a place. So of course, like the lobster means like the dish, the food that we make, the lobster, whatever we do. We're not talking about one lobster with a name and a personality. We're just talking in general about that. So again, the has this interesting uses, the usage of specific and general at the same time. The lobster is excellent. Or you could say, I love, so I love the fish at this restaurant. I love the hamburger, but stay away from this other thing. All right, so the lobster is expensive. So if you're talking again, like you want to be like the lobster at this place, that's the meaning. The lobster is, uh, is excellent. The lobster is expensive. So if I'm sitting with my friend at a seafood restaurant, I say, oh, you should get uh, the tuna. The tuna is a great value. The tuna is a great value. The tuna is a great value. Or you can say the tuna has a great value, either one. So the tuna is a great value, uh, but the lobster is expensive. The lobster is expensive. All right, do you like uh, Mexican food, Italian or Chinese? Uh, I like all those, actually. I like lots of... Lots of different kinds of food. It's interesting, Japanese is not my favorite kind of food, actually. <laughs> uh, but it's nice, I can get other things occasionally, Mexican or Thai or Indian food, a lot of Indian food in, uh, in Japan as well. So the lobster is excellent. Uh, or I could be talking about a group of people, like the, the staff is nice. So the staff at this hotel is nice. The staff at the hotel is nice. The staff is nice. So I'm talking generally about people. There might be some bad people, but generally I could say, yeah, the staff, the staff is nice. So the people who work at the hotel are nice. The staff is nice. Or like the employees are good. Look, Columbia in the house, says Richard. Hello, welcome. So Richard is in the house. Richard is in, Richard is in the house. The house. All right. So if I talk about, like, let's say I'm traveling and a friend, usually people will, will get off the airplane and they say, how was the food? So how was the food on the airplane? How was the food? People always want to know how the food is on the airplane. <laughs> So how was the food on the airplane? People might not even say, how was the food on the airplane? But usually someone is taking a long trip, they're on an airplane, I would say, hey, how was the food? How was 
the food. And they understand I'm talking about the food on the airplane, the airplane. How was the food? And they might say something like, oh, like the food, like the, the chicken was great, but uh, the dessert was not so good. So the chicken was good, but the dessert was not so good. So the food was delicious on the airplane. Okay. So maybe some of it was good, or as, the, uh, as, as a psychotic person might say, the food was balls, if it was really awful. Oh my goodness. All right. Any questions about that? Pretty easy. All right. So I can talk about a place again, like uh, I mentioned, the fishing is good here. Or I could talk about like going to Australia and say, wow, the surfing is really great in Australia. The surfing is really great in Australia. Okay. So I'm speaking generally, even though there's probably some specific thing I have in mind. All right. All right. And I think we've covered, let's see. All right, it's been 50 minutes already. Oh my goodness, that's a long time. Uh, but hopefully you guys get this. And as you get more examples and you're listening uh, to more of these and you will kind of keep your ears open for these things uh, as you hear them, I'll stay uh, for a little bit and answer. Uh, you have to try uh, Arabian food. Yeah, I've actually tried, I've tried food from all over the place. Many different places. I've had uh, Arabian food, like different. I'm sure there are even like different kinds of that. Uh, but yeah, had lots of different kinds of food. All right. So when you're thinking about these, listen carefully to how natives are using them. Listen carefully to the different pronunciation and why we do this. Again, generally, it's just to make sure things are easier to say. All right. So the planet of the apes, the planet of the apes, the planet of the apes. All right, from Kyrgyzstan. Nice to see everybody there. All right, well, that's it for this video. Uh, if you are a member of Fluent for Life, you will find a lot more. Uh, goes into much greater detail about this uh, in the, I believe it is the uh, A New Life lesson set in the program. Uh, if you're not in the program yet, you can click on the link in the description to learn more about that, where we go into a lot more, uh, a lot more uses of determiners. So these are some of them right here, but there are many, many more. Uh, that we talk about. So uh, if you are already a member of the program, I highly recommend you go back and review that lesson set. It will help you do these uh, and also hear natives using these expressions in a real conversation. All right. So I'll go back uh, and check. Let's see here. Questions, comments to see if anybody has anything. Let's see here. I don't know. This is going to be too difficult to go back through all of these. But everyone did a good job. Look at that. You guys did a good job. All right. Let's see. Actually, I think here, if anybody has any, any new comments, post them now. Because <laughs> that will be easier uh, than me trying to go back and look through all of these. Give a hug to Brazil, says uh, Eduardo. I can, all right, here you go. Hug for you guys. How to speak native English, not a bookish English. So this is one example. Uh, as I just gave, it's much better to focus on a particular thing and learn that really well. And now that you've, you've heard all of these examples, you will be listening for them uh, much more in your conversations or while you're watching movies and, and TV shows, that kind of thing. So if you want to sound more natural, you have to follow more of what native speakers are doing. It is what we do in Fluent for Life. The whole point of that program is to train you from speaking like a student to speaking like a native and understanding natives. All right, what about a hug for Mexico? <laughs> yes, everybody gets a hug out here. Hug for, hug for everybody. <laughs> a hug for Mexico. All right. But it looks like, let's see. Uh, do I have an opinion on NFTS? Do you mean NFTs? Or I don't know what NFTs is, if that's one thing. If you mean NFTs, I, I don't know much about that. I mean, it's, you're talking about like the non-fungible tokens or whatever that, whatever the acronym is. If not, if NFTs means something else, then I don't know. All right, yes, a great hug. <laughs> so no, I do, not, I do not know about that. Uh, and yes, I would not be the, the person to ask about that as well. All right, I believe I can understand English now. Also, I can speak French, Italian, and Spanish. Very good. All right, let's see. Oh, it looks like there's some uh, Chinese up there, which I can't read, but it looks like learning English. I understand that part, but I can't read the, uh, the Chinese. 
So that's a nice thing about learning Japanese. I can understand uh, some of the characters for, uh, for learning that. And what do I think about ChatGPT? <laughs> so I'm also not an expert in ChatGPT. I think you can find value in ChatGPT if you're trying to learn English or just answer questions. Uh, but um, I don't know. I, from the little I know about it, so from the little that I know about it, meaning I, I don't know much about ChatGPT actually, um, I would, I've heard that like it's, it's like politically biased, which sounds really weird. So this is like you're trying to train an AI uh, to give you answers about things, but it's giving people like biased answers, which is really unfortunate. So I'm seeing examples of that. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know much about it. But certainly you can, for, for basic things, if you're trying to get uh, answers about like what is this grammar point or whatever, I would use chat GPT to get naturally varied review. So it's one way to get a certainly text examples of sentences. You can also do that with Google though. So um, I don't know what additional benefit you would get from that because you still need to hear lots of real examples of actual native speaking. But we'll see where, uh, where AI goes from that. Uh, let's see. Okay, Jay says, I recently subscribed to your channel and you're helping me tons in learning English. Thank you. It's my pleasure. So speaking English outside is embarrassing and discomforting in non-English speaking countries. What to do about it? Any tips? Let me know what your name is because I can't read uh, the Cyrillic. Um, but in general, what I tell people is that the good news is you don't have to speak in order to improve your fluency. I know this may sound shocking to people, especially if you've been told this all your life, you need to speak in order to improve. But a lot of people, number one, they don't have speaking opportunities. Number two, if they do have speaking opportunities, they are very shy. Number three, even if they do try to speak and they're, they're like not shy about it, they're still not using the language correctly. So there are lots of good reasons to not do that. But really the fourth and most important reason is that it's just not necessary. So you don't actually have to speak in order to improve. And that's because the improvement comes from understanding the language better. So this is why I focus on things like uh, giving you a bunch of examples in a lesson rather than trying to give you uh, like a bunch of rules and telling you to remember that. Really, like in this example, we've got the, just the word the, and we're covering lots of conversational examples of that. And so now you will be listening for even more of those examples in your everyday conversations. But the point is, when you understand like a native, which is what we're trying to do here, when you understand like a native, you will think more like a native, so you will speak more like a native as well. So you don't have to worry about being embarrassed or shy or anything. All you need is more input. So this is exactly what we do in Fluent for Life. You can obviously do this by yourself if you like, uh, but if you need some help and you'd love to have someone that's just prepared everything for you and made it nice and easy, that's what we do in Fluent for Life. All right. Uh, all right. So when people say the game in the U.S., which game they usually refer to? Uh, it could be basketball, baseball, um, hockey, any of the like the four major sports. Uh, so usually some kind of sporting event like that. You wouldn't call racing like car racing. That would not be the game. That would be probably the race. So I like watching the race or watching the racing. Uh, on on weekends, but you can ask people if they if someone says yeah I, I can't meet or, or I would like to go but I'm watching the game on Saturday you can say oh what game are you watching that's a that's a perfectly fine question but people often just they will just say the game because maybe some people will not care and it's faster to just say the game than say oh I'm watching a, a baseball game between this team and that team you will rarely ever hear people say that. Uh, it's only, and they're just, they're just being faster and more conversational. Pretty Girl says, from 2015, I'm following you, sir. You are my big inspiration with a big heart. Well, glad to hear it. Hopefully you are improving. Samad says, you are a perfect teacher. Thank you. Too kind. Sounds free. No copyright music. That's an interesting name. Let's see. Which way would you say it is best to improve faster because I have a specific goal, which is to be fluent. I'm watching a ton of native content nowadays. Uh, so number one, uh, you're doing the right thing by watching native content, but you really should be focusing on a particular thing. 
I made a, a video recently where I was talking about different ways of making espresso. And so this is one example of naturally varied review. What people will do often is they will, they will like read a long novel or watch a few different movies, but they don't review that content in any way. So they're not learning systematically. And it's the systematic learning of native content that gets you fluent the fastest. So rather than trying to watch a bunch of random movies, and there might be some overlap. So uh, as an example, maybe I watch, uh, I don't know, watch a, like an action movie and I watch another action movie over here. There's going to be some vocabulary that's used in both of those, like the word the, obviously. Uh, but other things, there might be some words and expressions that are used. Uh, but a lot of it will be different. And so you're not getting much review of that. You really want to get a lot of overlap. So what I recommend is getting obviously something where I'm watching, like I did in that espresso video. Here's one person making espresso. Here's another video of somebody making espresso. Here's another version like of another video person making an espresso. And so this vocabulary, you know that really well. This vocabulary, you will know that a little bit better. Uh, and maybe some things you might still forget them, but it's much better and this is more systematic. And so if you want to get fluent faster, that's how you would do it. So you want to spend more time on less information, more time on less information. And again, this is one example of naturally varied review. Others would be hearing it at different times, different speeds, or from different speech, uh, different speakers. So I hear like a British English person uh, or an American English speaker or different places in America. These are all things we do in Fluent for Life. All right. Uh, my name Fridays. Really, your name is Fridays? That's an interesting name. Or uh, fur, uh, furtives. I'm, <laughs> I can't. I can't read over here. Okay, furtives. Furtives. Nice to meet you there. All right. Uh, so let's see. Good morning, watching from the Philippines. Is it because the company is more left? Uh, I, mm, well, there's a, I, I think there are lots of reasons why that happens, if you're talking about chat GPT. Uh, but in general, the, the culture in America is more, like, uh, certainly recently more left-leaning. Uh, let's see. Is listening good enough to become a good English student? Uh, I want to make it clear. I, I often get this question about listening. The point is not just listening. It's understanding the language. And so you understand the language best with lots of different kinds of input. So not just listening to something, you want to see it. Like if I'm teaching my children, if I'm teaching my children the word marker and I don't show them what a marker is, I only have them listen to that. They're not going to know what a marker is. So I could describe it like, oh, a marker is like a long thing. You write with it and, and I can explain what it is, but it's much faster just to show them the marker. So it's not about just listening to it. I want to see it. I want to write it myself. So if I want to practice writing it, like me, if I'm practicing Japanese, I want to do uh, like reading Japanese, writing Japanese, listening to it. Uh, and then speaking is a, is a small part of that. But most of the practice is done by yourself as you get more information. So that's what you should be doing to get fluent. Uh, especially if you want to become fluent as fast as possible. I think, in, uh, I think in some sentences with defaults in grammar, this is a good way to learn English better, or is it important to learn grammar in the same moment? So remember, Eduardo, uh, good question. You're talking about grammar like, it, like it's kind of a separate thing from the vocabulary. What we've learned here, this is examples of how natives learn the vocabulary. So they're actually learning the grammar and pronunciation and grammar at the same time. So the vocabulary, grammar, pronunciation, all these things, you're actually learning them if you learn them like a native. That's how you learn them. So you're, all these things are connected uh, and you don't have to worry about like, like oh no, am I, am I like studying some grammar rules over here? Because you're getting all of that naturally as you get more examples. So this is how natives learn. This is how you learned uh, your native language as well. Uh, let's see. All right, so William says, I have a big problem. I can read and understand English basically when people speak, but I can speak, but I can speak well. My pronunciation is terrible. Yeah, William, you should get Frederick if you do not have that already. You can click on the link in the description to get that. Uh, so this is our app we developed for teaching pronunciation the same way native speakers are learning it. Uh, obviously, we, we can't cover every accent, but if you're listening to my pronunciation and you learn the different 
individual sounds of English and you learn how to put them together in sentences, you will become uh, much better at listening and pronouncing the language. Uh, Yo Yu says, why do some teachers still teach English through translation since it's not effective? Uh, I think because it's faster. I talk, I talk about this uh, in many videos, but often, like if you look at this, the speed for learning a language, So if you have to learn <clears throat> for a test very quickly, then it's, it's okay to translate something. You're going to not remember most of that, but if we think about like people spending time learning vocabulary, uh, so this is, let's say this is like number of words and this is how much time. Just put a little a clock right there. Uh, so if you think about spending more time, the traditional way people learn with translations, I could give you, like, let's say uh, 10 words a day and give you the translations for those. But the problem is, like, the vocabulary would never really increase. Uh, it's certainly not the vocabulary uh, that you could use fluently because you are learning something new and then you forget something. So each day you, like, learn some new words, but then you forget others. And so you kind of go like this. But the, uh, the native way, you're learning, it's like a little bit slower because you're spending more time on fewer words but you move up to fluency much faster. So while you start higher up here, uh, just by knowing more words, because I'm, I'm trying to make you memorize a bunch of things, but again, you just forget it. So what most people do is they get stuck here. And for they can, they can be stuck here for many years. While native speakers, like a native child born today will be a better speaker in like three years than many people who start English as an adult and learn it for three years. And that's just because of how they're learning. So they're spending a lot more time getting more review of fewer things, and then their fluency takes off. All right, so you remember more words and you're able to use them fluently over time. <clears throat> uh, let's see. So I can read, but I can't speak. Yeah, so that's the same kind of thing uh, that I was just talking about. Could you do a lesson on how a native speculates? What do you mean? A lesson on how a native speculates? I don't know what that means, Carl. Uh, let's see, so I'd like to know the streaming days and times. Yeah, so I don't have a specific schedule for this. Lately, I've been doing them around this time on Monday and Thursday, so that's uh, Japanese time. Uh, but I like my, I enjoy my freedom, and so I, I know that's probably less convenient for people, but I do make the videos available for people to watch anytime they'd like. Uh, Lewis is writing in paper in your opinion. What do you mean writing in paper? Like you mean writing? Like, yeah, like, like physically write, write by hand. Uh, you can certainly write on a computer, but you can learn better by physically writing stuff on a, on a piece of paper with a pen or pencil. So let's imagine you are learning my language, Uzbek, uh, and how would you learn to speak it without moving and living in Uzbekistan? Well, first I'd need to get some input. So I don't need to be in it. There's nothing magical about like the, the dirt where I am. So it's like if I'm in Japan right now, um, if I pick up some dirt from Japan, do I magically become fluent because I'm, I'm holding some dirt from Japan? It's the people that get me fluent. And it's not even really the people, it's just the input from the people that get me fluent. So this is why I can be in the United States and become a fluent speaker of Japanese. Uh, I might not know a lot of cultural things, but certainly being able to communicate in the language, uh, I would be able to do that pretty easily. Uh, but the way I would do it is learning the same way children do. Um, and this just means like, like I can give you a, a Japanese lesson right now. I'll, I'll, maybe I'll try to give like a little bit more difficult one. <coughs> For some people, I'll do this quickly. I don't have much time left. Uh, but if I'm going to teach you Japanese, so you are in Uzbekistan right now, you are not in Japan, uh, but I could still teach you. Kore wa maka, ne? Maka, maka, maka. Maka, 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 maka. Aoi maka, kuro, kuro i maka, akai, akai maka, ne? Akai. Ippon. So, kazueru nara ne. Kazueru wa, so, nomu, taberu, kazueru, kazueru. Ippon, nihon, sanbon, ichi, ni, san. Ippon, ippon no maka. Nihon, nihon no maka. Ippon, nihon, sanbon. 
So if I gave you a lesson like that every day and I taught you a little bit more, you would learn to speak Japanese even in your own country. Okay? So it's not, it's not where you live, it's how you learn that gets you fluent in the language. Does that make sense? <coughs> So this is what we do for uh, especially people in Fluent for Life. We essentially want to retrain your brain so that you stop thinking through your native language and you start understanding English the same way native speakers do. And you do that by getting lots of examples in naturally varied review. So you notice I'm just using three markers here to teach some Japanese. But you're learning some adjectives, you're learning some verbs, you're learning sentence structure, pronunciation, all those different things. But the point is your brain really likes learning that way because it's like a puzzle. So your brain is trying to figure out what's happening. If I just tell you the answer, your brain gets bored by that. But if I present information in such a way that you would learn, ah, like, now I get it, then you feel very confident, you feel very, very strong, and you remember that information. Okay. Uh, let's see. So I would say I've been studying this topic recently, so confused for Spanish speakers. Thanks. All right. So I would say that music is a very good, funny, and effective way, even if you don't live in the country. Yep, so that's another thing you can do. Ken Eng, hi from Ukraine. So I have to leave you here and head to work. Okay, that's fine. We'll see you. Thanks for joining us. I've been learning a lot thanks to you, I'm guessing. Marcos, it's my pleasure. So Sunday night here in Montreal. Hi from Brazil. Keep up the good work. What do you think about using chat GPT to learn English? I think somebody else asked me earlier. Uh, hi, hola teacher, hola todos. I would love to learn Japanese from you. Please, pretty please, teach me. <laughs> there are lots of people that teach Japanese on YouTube already. Although I don't know of anyone, I, I don't really watch any Japanese uh, learning videos on YouTube, but you can probably find somebody and there might be some people that teach like that. But the better thing to do would be to watch understandable content for Japanese native kids rather than things that are teaching you the language. But if you feel excited, like, wow, look at that, I understood what he said, that's the way you should be learning the language because that's the way you learned your native language at home. All right, so wonderful chat, GPT. Yes, uh, if, it, if it helps you, then fantastic. So just bought Fluency Guide, Ask, uh, ask Akshar. Uh, pardon my poor pronunciation, Akshar. Thank you very much. It's nice to see you in the program. Hi from Jakarta, Indonesia. Love your teaching, but I'm not uh, everything. Chad GPT informs everything I know, but I'm not everything. Uh, but not everything. Okay. Yes, uh, so chat GPT can be helpful, and I think other people have already talked about how chat GPT can used or be used uh, for language learning. But again, whatever particular thing you might be using, you should be understanding the language like a native. That's what's going to help you speak. So there's always new tools and new apps and other things like that, but a lot of them just give you the same uh, kind of textbook lessons that you would get anywhere else. So hi uh, from the, uh, Ukraine, I know five languages. You are a good teacher, all right, glad to hear it. <laughs> very nice. Uh, very powerful lessons we're all learning. There are many flaws in the robotic. Wow, yes, that's true. All right, I have to shut it down now, but it has been a pleasure and hopefully you got the message. You got the message today. All right, so remember, if you want to get fluent like a native, you don't want to get stuck in this. You really should be learning more like a native. Just like today, we're only focusing on the word the. So that's one example of how you would focus on something to learn it really well. Uh, but your personality style and methodology are great for learning. You're awesome. Glad to hear it. Yes. Well, again, uh, I would still, I think I would still recommend like learning from a native speaker, but uh, you could, you, you should be learning from multiple people as long as they can give you native input. All right. Carl says, thank you. A good note to end on. Have a fantastic day. If you would like to learn more about both pronunciation uh, and also learning like a native, you can click on the links below in this video. So Frederick is really great for helping you uh, or whether your pronunciation and listening are already good, um, but you'd like to help your kids learn the language like a native, that's how you can do it. Uh, and thanks from Hungary. Nice to see you there, Gabor. All right, have a fantastic day. Uh, again, if you're in Fluent for Life and you'd like to learn more about the specific topic we covered today, you can go to the In uh, A New Life lesson set. You'll find that information in that lesson set, A New Life. Uh, really interesting lesson set about moving to Australia. And so you hear lots of examples of the and also other determiners, all right? Buen lunes, so good evening for everybody else. Yes, have a fantastic evening or day wherever you are and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.